to our Wednesday webinar. Um, for those of you guys who don't know me, my name is Donna Callender and I'm here week in, week out every Wednesday to chat to you guys about all things social media. And this week, um, I decided to do things a little bit differently. So what we do every week is, um, if you've never joined us before, is what we do is we sit and we look at how um, you guys can learn from big brands, from smaller brands, from um you know, basically independents around the country um, and we turn basically what they're doing on social media into into case studies and actionable steps for you guys. And this week I wanted to look at a topic because actually quite a lot of you guys struggle, quite a lot of, in fact not just you guys, most people struggle a little bit with understanding hashtags, how they work um, and I guess, you know, what you can um, what you can do with hashtags, what's the best um, route for your business, um, all that kind of thing. So what I want to do is I'm going to break down hashtags for you guys a little bit today by using case studies. And we've got a mix of bigger brands and smaller brands. Um, so without any further ado, let's get cracking. So what we're going to cover today is we're going to look at reels. So I get asked questions quite a lot about reels um, and versus sort of static images versus videos. What should you be doing? Um, but one of the biggest things around it is how to use hashtags on reels. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to look at um, small business hashtags and how they can signpost back to you. So actually, you know, that what are the national ones that we should be looking at and how do they actually work for smaller businesses? Um, we are going to look at um, getting targeted with hashtags to niche down. So actually how niche can you go with hashtags and what does that look like? We're going to look a bit at location-based hashtags um, and how they would support your physical place. So if you've got to actually drive physical footfall, but actually it can also back up your e-commerce site as well. And then we're going to look at sectors and profession-based hashtags as well. So how those actually work. And as always, look, any questions at all, this is an open forum. So just jump, jump into the Q&A, ask a question, and I will get to it as soon as I can. Um, but I've got quite a busy session today, so I'm going to just keep moving. Hashtags is a big old topic, guys. Um, now, we talk about this a little bit, but basically the prior, we, you can prioritise your channels by learning from your competitors. So this was a screen grab that I took from um, maybe. So one of the biggest ways of actually finding your competitors, so it might be that, you know, you've got a bit of a niche business, or it might be that actually your local, your competitor isn't somebody down the road. It could be somebody, I don't know, the other end of the country, but how do you know where they are and what they are if you don't know, um, if you don't know they exist? So one of the best ways of doing that is actually to look at the hashtags. So on maybe you can actually add in hashtags. You can add in hashtags, you can create little groups. So for example, it might be shop small, or it might be, hashtag personal trainer or it might be hashtag butcher uk ones that you might use you can actually add into maybe and then you can start to see which other businesses are posting within those hashtags and then this is what comes up so actually it says name not available but that's just it's just normally if it's like a private account or somebody personal that's done it but you are able to go into the post so what this does is this has come up saying um, so these are for um, the general hashtags that we've got here. And then it's come up here saying um, follow RM creation. So that's obviously the business that um, has created the post. And then you can look at that's got 27,000 comments on it sorry um, engagements on it and then what you can do is go in and you can look at who's done the post and basically it continues like that but effectively any business can do that so just make sure if you want to learn from competitors and you're not quite sure where they are make sure that you are thinking about the hashtags that you're using add them into the system and you can start engaging within them Because 79.1% of consumers in the UK spend over an hour on social media every day versus the 19% of businesses that have active um, active social media accounts. So basically, the more you do more of this, the more you get used to hashtags, tagging, and um, the more you get stronger and more confident with your content, the more you're going to engage with that 79.1% of people that are on for over an hour every single day, which means that you are, you've got, you know, like basically you're on the front foot as opposed to the back foot, which is the 19% and um, the, I'm sorry, it's the rest of the people in the um, UK that don't um, post on a regular basis. 
because we help over 25,000 businesses get more out of social media because we help you guys compare your social media performance with other businesses, as I mentioned. Um, we give you guys all the social media tools and insights you need to use social media more effectively. And then you get access to us. You get access to the people behind the business who generate all this content, who create great video um, content for you guys that teach you how to do a thing um, and that give you lots of great training um, resources as well. So that's my spiel. I'm going to start with a national first, and then we're going to look at um, some um, some independents as well. Now that took a little minute to load, didn't it? Right. So we are going to look at we are going to look at um, benefit. So benefit, if you don't know what it is, benefit is an absolutely massive makeup brand. They are an internationally renowned makeup brand. And they target very much that kind of feminine, feminine, young, sexy, you know, like women that, you know, like basically want to feel good. They've got um, independent shops and they sell online and they also sell as um, as like stands and things like that within the likes of boots and things. Um, but they do a whole whole range of different products. They do tend to target more towards the younger market. Um, however, I still shop with benefits sometimes. Um, and here, what they've done is a reel. And I want to look at the hashtags that they've used here. So let's take a little look. And interestingly, we're going to Facebook for reels. So again, if you hadn't realized, um, Facebook now do reels as well. Because so obviously Facebook and Instagram know each other very well and uh, Facebook could not do reels so let's take a little look All right, so you're not here for a skincare routine, but you get the picture, right? So Benefit have used this reel to talk, to um, work with an influencer, so at Glam with Darcy, um, and they've worked with her to create this um, video, which basically, or this reel, sorry, which is them showing off, you know, basically how the product works, how it can work for you. And they've used an influencer because naturally, you know, she's young, she's got a huge following, and um, they, they want to attract more people to use benefit products as opposed to anyone else. So they've used this reel um, and they have used a couple of hashtags here. So they have used um, hashtag um, professional. So that is their, their hashtag because that is what's um, the, basically what it's called. Poor care. So that again is anybody, I guess, who is looking for anything to do with caring after their pores, you know, so that is, I guess, you know, the, what would I call it? It's that is the your reason for your service. So it would be no different to me looking for, I don't know, curly hair products or a hair dye or I don't know, you know, like um, I don't know, eyelash growth or something like that, you know, like you know, something very specific. So the people who are looking within that hashtag are going to be looking for those specific types of products. So apply that to your own business. Think about what is it you're selling or what is it you're promoting or what is it you're doing. And what are and what is specific about it? And think about like that is almost niching down a little bit. But that is why they've used the poor care, smooth skin. I guess is more sort of like generalized. So like I guess you know there will obviously be people following that hashtag and people engaging with it, but it's probably not going to be as strong and will get lost a little bit and among some of the other um sort of more generalized, which might be like more like body moisturizers and things. However, um you know it it does it it it's almost you're looking to care for your pores and then it's the smooth skin as the result. Does that make sense? Um, and then obviously you've got your pores, your pore routine. So they've used a couple here, which is quite a small amount, but they don't need to because the thing with larger brands is that when it actually comes to their physical, um, 
when it comes to their um, normal posts, they don't tend to use um, any hashtags. And the reason why is because they don't need to. They're already a giant brand. They've got a big advertising budget. They've got the little blue tick on Instagram. So they don't need to use hashtags to be found because they've already got the big following. Hashtags are obviously helpful, but they don't need to as much. The reason why they use them on Reels is because Reels need, need to... Uh, be, Instagram and Facebook make reels work harder. So let me, if I just show you Instagram. Instagram, right, if I just show you Instagram and then we'll have a little look at what I mean by this. So on Instagram, when you're looking at reels, so it just comes up. So it, it and how it's prioritized, it is by, anything that I guess you normally go and look at. So here on Reels, it would be um, anything that you normally would look at. So it's like your behaviours, I guess. So, I mean, here you can see, obviously, I look at a lot of fitness kind of things. So there'd be lots of things like that that will come up for me, okay? However, why would I put a hashtag on there? The reason why is because there are so many. There are so many. And Instagram wants you to interact with the reels that actually will apply to you. So there might be a fitness one, for example, here that I would be interested in, but there might be other ones that I'm going, eh, I'm just not that fussed on it. Um, so if I did, um, if there was a, a hashtag that was used, so say that this was benefit, for example. We're going to talk about some of these in a second. So ignore these. Benefit UK. So it's going to take a little minute. Benefit Cosmetics. So if I if I benefit, I would want to make sure that in the hashtags that what was coming up was things like um the pores, things like the um I don't know maybe beauty brand, things like that. Here we go. Might be um. Here we go. Yeah, so that's D-Glam with me, that kind of thing. So in here, obviously, it might be more things like um, glamming up, anything like that, right, that they're doing. But the idea is, is that you are, you're using Reels to help signpost people back to your business. Reels naturally get higher up the algorithm. Instagram and Facebook favor them because people interact with them because they're short, they're snappy, they're visual content. And as you can see, if you've got a very visual kind of brand that you can do things like that with, it is perfect for it. And the reason why you would use hashtags is to niche down a little bit. So, you know, you could be, a, you know, like a, a big fish, you might be a big fish, but you might be in a giant sea. And what you want to be is a big fish in a smaller pond. So if you, especially at a more localized business or a more regionalized biz business or a more specific business, then what you want to do is make sure that you're coming up within that. So you don't want to say you sell beauty products. You don't just want to be coming up in beauty products. You want to be seen by people who want a specific color, or you might want to be seen by somebody who wants a specific thing. It might be, it might be anti-wrinkle. It might be, um, might be, I don't know, like waxing. It could be anything within that beauty sphere. Do you see what I'm saying? It's kind of about making sure that you, the real gets you seen by thousands of people, but you want to be seen by the by say out of that out of the say say you said your view your reel had twelve thousand views. That's got ninety seven likes. Now those ninety seven likes are the ones that are probably more likely to go and buy the benefit product. Do you see what I mean? It is about getting you out there. The video gets you out there, and the hashtags get you seen by the right people. So I hope that makes sense. I just wanted to kind of show you guys why you would use hashtags on a reel when already, because everyone thinks, oh, well, reels just get seen. They do get you seen, but you want to be seen by more of the right people. And then Instagram, as soon as Instagram or Facebook, any of them recognize that I, for example, am interacting a lot with your reels, they will then push you, push you further out to me and I will see much more of you. So that's why it's so important. This is the Republic of Happy. And I mean, it just makes me happy looking at it, to be fair. Um, but um, what they have done is um, they they use Instagram very much as a, you know, like a little shop window, if you like. So they want people to purchase um, 
their products and as you can see everything they do is I mean it's gorgeous like it is color it is bright it is beautiful it is homewares it's gifting um but everything for her is not just about I guess you know that what you're actually purchasing from her it is about the experience you get from purchasing from her so she uses social media very much as you know it's her shop window she's showing you how it works and one of the things that you want is to get you know really beautiful package through the door so she did this post which was um if um, it's one of these bright parcels on the way to you. I don't know if you know, but I really enjoy packing my orders for customers. It's a chance for me to get creative and share a little bit of my joy with every package. So she says that she's always finding new ways to fit in extra goodies and little surprises to make you smile. And she even adds little thank you notes to let you know how much she appreciates you. Um, but so that is, I guess, you know, her celebrating, you know, that what she does and telling you, you know, that you're going to get added extras and things like that. So if, for example, you do have nice packaging or you do focus on boxing and that kind of thing, talk about it. She does. But in terms of the hashtags, I just wanted to show you this bit. So this is about the small businesses and um, as well. So here um, she has said, so if you're looking for a small business that really cares about its customers, look no further. Um, and what she's done is she's created her own hashtags, first of all, which I really like. So she's done the Republic of Happy Citizens and then the Republic of Happy. So those are her two. So it means that the likelihood is there's probably not any other brands that are using it. But equally, it also means that if you don't know the Republic of Happy, you're not going to be following it. So what she wants is for people to follow and engage with those two um, with those two hashtags. And then you've got here all of these. So this is all about the shop small, love independent, all that kind of thing. So by targeting the small business hashtag, she is looking for people who are who want to shop local, want to shop with small and want to support independent businesses. Now, if you are, and I don't know which businesses are on here at the moment or which businesses are going to watch this um, as a follow up. But if you are a small business or if you are an independent business, then please start using some of these hashtags. There are hundreds, but these are how you get found by people who want to support independent businesses who um especially like UK based businesses. So here you can see Shop Small UK, that's a huge one. And as you can see, when I click this, so I'm going to click on it in a second, but when I hold my mouse over it, you can see the little um, finger there. That means it's clickable. So the hashtags are clickable. And basically how it works is I, if I basically like supporting small independent businesses and finding quite unique gifts or unique things that I could buy for people, I would be following that hashtag. Equally, if I'm a small independent business, I'm likely to be using that hashtag. So it's a good way for her to find people to collaborate with. But you can see small um, shop, small and happy, shop, small and love indie, buy independent, buy indie made. So that's again, go back to that independent business owner. So not just about it being small, but buy from independent businesses rather than big franchises or buy, buy um, big conglomerates. Um, support the maker so she physically makes her own stuff so again that's going to again that's a small business but she physically makes it and does it all herself there's lots of UK based ones so do you see what I mean and now what I'm going to do is go into one of the hashtags here sorry it'll take a little second sometimes zoom and um, just it'll just add to the suspense guys so here, right? So hashtag shop small UK has 668,000 posts. And then what it will show you is the top posts. See the ones that have been done either most recently or have gotten a bit more engagement. And as you can see, a lot of the small businesses are indies. It is people who physically make their own, um, make their own products. You'll find a lot of homewares on here regularly. You'll find a lot of like baby stuff. You'll find a little bit of fashion and gifts. But you'll also find like little markets and things like that. But the idea should be any of the customers that are following Shop Small UK, they're going to be interested in her products. That's why she's done it, because the people that are following are looking for inspiration. They're not actually sure exactly what they want, but they might be looking for a gift or they might be looking for a cushion or something for their home. This is how you get found. So make sure if you make products, if you are a small business, a small independent business owner, gifting business, I mean, you might have an Etsy thing, or it might even be that um, a small business might be that um, you have a physical premises. 
there is nothing wrong with you actually promoting that as well. So these are the kind of hashtags you need to make sure you're engaged in. And if you want to engage in them more, make sure you follow them so that you can actually engage in them more. And again, you can do this through maybe. So this can be like another hashtag that you um, get engaged in. So now this is a large company. It's a really unusual one. So I just kind of wanted to show you this. So these guys use fewer hashtags. But this is because they are niche, I guess, with what they do. So it's very specific to what people are looking for. Right. So, I mean, she looks fabulous. She's dancing. The question is, will my loop stay in when I'm dancing? So these are loop earplugs. Um, and the idea behind their Instagram is they are they want to show, as you can see, they want to show um how the ear the earplugs actually work in different situations. So they're clearly targeting a very specific audience with this. And they are a large company, by the way. As you can see, they've got a little blue tick. Um, and so this is the idea is is that they want to promote it to people who are looking for earplugs but looking at it they are looking it's, it's for dancing so we're going into festival season where people are planning their festivals um and they want to look at how these loop earplugs would work in different scenarios so there's a couple of these there's do they hurt like disposable earplugs that's somebody talking about whether they do or don't there'll be other ones there's how it works for other things you see what i mean so they're answering a specific question about the product so everything relates back to the product, but they're doing it with real people. This one was, will they stay in when I'm dancing? She plugs them in. She dances around like a lunatic and has a great time, which shows me clearly they stay in. So here it goes. Lose yourself in the music, not your earplugs. We tried and tested loops on the dance floor and after various shakes and shimmies, they're not going anywhere. So go ahead, let loose and dance like no one's watching. Right. So as you can see, people have commented on that because there are people that are looking for that specific thing. If you don't know about loop earplugs, how do you find them? You find them through hashtags. You also find them through the reel as well. But so they've used hashtag loop earplugs. So that is their one. So again, make your own, that's absolutely fine. So that then you can make sure that your customers start using it. Concert life, so that again, is anybody that's going to concerts. So it's quite general, but they can afford to do that because they're a wee bit bigger. Um, festival season, I'd be following that if I'm interested in going to festivals, I would 100% be following that but guess who else is going to be doing that, it's going to be fashion brands, it's going to be beauty brands because it's all about beauty it will be the actual festivals that are using that, it might be places that are using that, but then it's this one, why would I be looking for the loop earplugs in the first place it would be because I might be sensitive to noise, so that is where the niche so these are general, which is about the 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 place you're going to be wearing them to, right? So it's the, the problem, the problem they're solving. And then this one is actually the reason that I would be looking for them in the first place. So I would be following noise sensitivity and I would be following hearing health. I might be following a hundred other ones. But so they have chosen to only choose a couple and really niche. So they've chosen where are you going to wear them to? Do they fall out? No, they don't. So that, that matches up the content. And then they've chosen the noise sensitivity and the hearing health, which is my reason for doing it. So for example, if your product or your service solves a problem, actually look for the hashtags related to that problem. It could be anything. It could be fertility. It could be hair loss. It could be, I don't know, gifts for over 40s. Do you see what I mean? It is quite literally about what the product is and then they've got the which is their own hashtag. Then it's about, you know, well, actually, does it work? So that's to do with the festival experience. And actually, did you know you could wear these festivals? And then it's the problem that it's solving. So you can get mega, mega targeted when it comes to um the when it comes to hashtags and thinking about why, why you would use it, who it's for. And where you would, I don't know, wear it to, or you know, a, a specific problem within that sphere.
This completely different again. So this is the Woodland Trust. Um, we're just going to go into this. So what they've done is they've created this little reel. So the UK has more ancient oaks than the rest of, I think they said Europe. Um, they've done hashtag wild isles. And here you can see from the, I'll just stop that for a second. And uh, here you can see, as mentioned in Wild Isles on BBC iPlayer. So this was obviously a programme that was on BBC iPlayer. There are more ancient oaks in the UK than the rest of Europe combined. They've then gone into detail about the ancient trees and it's saying that they worked with people across the UK to care for ancient trees and campaign for better legal protections. What they want is for people to actually go to the link in the bio. So they are doing this for a thing. And what they've done is they've used the hashtag that BBC have used, which is very clever. There is no reason why. I know that, the, you know, that, you know, the Woodland Trust have basically created this off the back of a programme. Why couldn't any of you guys do this and use their hashtag? Because if it works directly, so say you watched a programme on, I don't know, I don't know, if, so going back to beauty, women over 40s, beauty regimes and how that works with, I don't know, the menopause as a random example of that, right? Um, how could you use that? So if you watch the programme and you do fitness, you do hair, you do anything to do with that sphere or that's your target market, you could take their hashtag, you could even talk about what they talked about during it and say, this is how that applies to my business. So that's number one, how to use that kind of hashtag, which is, you know, something that's, I guess, bigger than you. And then they've gotten the specific. So, you know, they've done like the ancient trees, they've done um, their ancient woodland. So that again goes back to, I guess, you know, who are they talking to? They're talking to people who care about trees. So if I care about trees, I'm going to be looking at these. BBC iPlayer, again, they've used their hashtag. So anybody that's following that, who suddenly, you know, suddenly if I am interested in trees and nature and British woodlands and I follow and I follow the hashtag for BBC iPlayer, I'm going to be much more interested in the Woodland Trust. And then they've done things like Woodland Walk. So again, who else is going to be interested in this post? Well, it's again, anyone who's interested in walking, wildlife. They've done Spring Watch again, which again is a big BBC programme. Then, of course, they've tagged. So they've done the BBC Spring Watch, BBC Earth and BBC iPlayer. So again, hashtags are brilliant for getting found. Tagging is good for getting shared and seen. So make sure that you're thinking about both of those things when you're looking at these hashtags. So again, this is just a different way of doing it. They are using a BBC programme to talk about something that's important to them to get people to do a thing, which is, you know, the link in the bio. And then they're using their hashtags to get seen by people because guess what? It's relevant. So again, watch something on TV in any way applies to you. Take it and flip it on its head and use the hashtags, tag them in, talk about how that works for you guys. Because guess what? You're going to get more of the right audience because the people that watch that are going to be interested in your business. And then this is really cool. So this is um, Snoop in Shrewsbury. And this is all about local hashtags. So, well, not just local, actually, because they do use shop small. But uh, so this is a really, really cute little shop. Um, it's based in Shrewsbury. Um, and as you can see, I mean, it is cool. It's just so cool. Um, so they do again homewares, um, really cool sort of um like little little products. They've got like the glasses here. They've got the little bags. They do basically it's like lots of gifting stuff. Um, it's gorgeous. So they use Instagram very much as a way of driving people physically down to their store. What they do here is this is the yin and yang hair claws. So which color is your favorite? Now, first of all, before you can talk about the hashtags. Ask people, give people to options and ask them what they think because people love giving opinions, particularly on social media. And if you want to promote a product, just put the put two up and say which one's your favourite. It could be pies, it could be two shops, it could be pasta, it could be two hair colours, doesn't matter what it is. Um, but put it on there because people love giving their opinions. Then they've done 
FYI, we've only got a couple of each colour we left as we um, they flew out over the bank holiday weekend. So again, that's creating that fear of missing out. So again, make sure you use that a lot. Let people know. Now, as you can see in their actual post, the main post, they haven't put the hashtags. What they've done is they've put them underneath. So they've done it as a comment. So again, you can do that. You can add it as a comment or you can add it into the actual post. That's totally up to you. So again, have you noticed they've done the same thing as that other business did? Shop small, small business. Um, and again, here they've done the place. So Shrewsbury, anybody following the Shrews um, Shrewsbury hashtag are likely to be local or visiting or businesses within Shrewsbury. Um, they've got Shrewsbury business here again, which is another one. They've got Shrewsbury town, again, another one. Shrewsbury life. So really, if you don't sell online and you only sell in your physical premises, the only way really to drive new people who don't know that you exist through social media down to your shop to do the thing that you want them to do, buy, do a service, whatever it might be, um, is by using these kinds of hashtags. And also when you go into them, let's have a look at them. So Shrewsbury Life, what's in here? engage within those hashtags so add those hashtags to your maybe account and actually start engaging within them because as you'll see there'll be restaurants there'll be bars there'll be cafes there will be um local societies um there will be everything in there there'll be local mum groups there's workshops anybody following any of these businesses are going to be interested also in hers do you see what i mean so it's a really good way. So if I've come from hers and I've gone and so basically say I follow, who's this one? Say I follow Amber's Pizza, right? I follow Amber's Pizza. If I was Snoop, then I would have, and I, and I found them through this hashtag, I would like her post. I would comment on it and say, lovely pizza, I've been in there before. Something as simple as that, okay? Now, why would you do that? Well, it means that if all that will come up there in the comments is Snoop says, you know, I don't know, like, love the pizza, it's great. Now, if I'm Amber's Pizza, I'm more likely to then go, oh, thanks so much, and then go in and follow Snoop. Um, and then if I um, if I follow um, Snoop, I'm much more likely to go in and follow Amber's Pizza off the back of that interaction because I would be able to see both comments. So it's that Instagram... Um, Instagram sort of you know down the rabbit hole you know that you just dive in and you're not quite sure what you're going to find but suddenly you find all these amazing businesses that you couldn't find before so make sure you're using local hashtags and make sure you're looking at these kind of things and following them because that's what it's all about Then we have the two Lauras. So this is more about profession-based hashtags and services. Um, so let's have a little look. So it's gonna take a little second. There we go, right. So here, this is about profession-based hashtags and sector. So we've, so we've covered, I guess, location. We've covered that small business, indie business, why that's so important. We have looked at the sort of more national-based hashtags, you know, your more generalistic ones. We've looked at then the hashtags that you could use for getting specific. So this one's interesting. So let's look. Right. So these guys um, basically are promoting their services to social media managers. So it's people like myself, like anybody else who manages other people's social media accounts for them. And because a lot of people just can't do it themselves. So, you know, they've got the budget or whatever to farm it out to other people, which is great. And so they are looking for those social media um, managers to help them elevate their content, to help 
manage things better but they're also looking for people who also manage their own content and just want to elevate it a little bit so as you can see they've created a wheel which is all about simple advice it's the top three tips that they would use and honestly I cannot stress enough how much using tips helps you on social media then we've gone into number three is so important right so that's their caption that would make me go oh I missed number three I'd go back and watch that to see what they mean and then it's well what else would you add so um, that's then asking their followers to then comment. So they're asking a question, they're asking for opinion. So, you know, one person has, which is interesting. But what I want to show you guys is the hashtags. So this is where they've gotten sector specific, right? So I'll show you it first. This is just for social media, but I'll give you examples of how that would work for anyone else. So social media manager life is a hashtag that maybe a social media manager would use so it would be that they're likely to be following it engaging in it and then looking for ideas hints tips that kind of thing so they're going to follow that and they're going to come across the two lotters social media manager same social media manager expert social media managers do you see the difference there's an s without an s use the different spellings or use the plural versus the singular for things because actually it does matter if I just use the singular I'm not going to get found by the people that lose the use the plural does that make sense so make sure you do mix them up a little bit Um, you can see that they've done it for that's almost you know like social media manager life so that's that you know like people put I don't know mum life hashtag fit life hashtag I don't know foodie life coffee lover life those are genuine ones. So if you have any of those kind of things, make sure you're using them because you will be found. And then you've got like, I guess they're trying to focus on the female side of things. So it's that, um, you know, like freelancing females, they're looking at women empowering women. So they're maybe targeting a much more female audience and that you get that feel probably from like their, um, their sort of, you know, branding and that kind of thing. And then they've got things like digital mum. So again, it's um, this digital mums group, but then there's also the, you know, like basically people who operate within the digital sphere that are mums that are going to be using that. And then they've done things like virtual assistants. So again, that's a very specific one. So they'll be targeting virtual assistants who manage social media, right? So they've used a ton of hashtags. You can use as many as you like, but really you can use, like, I don't know, 50 to 30 hashtags usually kind of works um, on Insta. And it's thinking about this, right? So thing, this is all about the people that they're targeting, right? So these ones here. And so if you were, I don't know, thinking about services, so it might be, um, I don't know, business coaching. It might be, um, it might be something to do with, um, I don't know, mortgage advisory. It could be, um, that you are a will writer it could be anything like that you know so you would get really specific as to who you were targeting for that and then with the rest of it it's more general stuff so it's things like you know community over competition my creative community so I guess those are more general ones that have come up so what they've done is done a bit of research on the types of ones that are coming up for social media managers and then they've just used them and then the mum side of things, the women side of things, that's them targeting directly people. So that's big people, big amount, big market is their social media market. The small amount is the digital mums. It is females, that kind of thing. So that's basically taking, you know, this is everybody. And then I'm going to niche down a little bit to talk to you directly, which again is much more likely to drive the right people to their account. So you can use profession-based hashtags. You can use very specific hashtags. Could be teachers, could be, I don't know, um, could be stylists, could be architects, could be anybody. But they've all got their own hashtags. So have a bit of a play with these. And again, you can make sure you can go in and you can just follow them and see what's there. So, you know, I don't know, hashtag social media management. There'll be a whole load of people selling their services, but then there'll be a whole load of people that are looking for tips as well. So that's how they'll be able to find them. As you can see, you can follow them all. And it might be that actually you go, oh, do you know what? That's pretty cool. I'm going to take that and I'm going to reshade it. So there we go. Fab. Now, one of the things that we do each week, bearing in mind all those hashtags, is we've actually created the um, social media content calendar for you guys, which is basically a list of all the national events, all the campaigns, all of the um, national days and weeks and months that are coming up from like basically it was January up until the end of December. We've pulled them all together. We've also put the hashtags in there so that you know what hashtags to use when you're thinking about any of these, um, 
when you're thinking about any of these campaigns that you might want to do. So I am going to click on May. And I'm going to buzz on to the end of May because we've done a couple for May. As you can see, there's tons of them. Right. Okay. So right at the end of May, we have World Digestive Health Day. You can see here we've even done like a, we've we've explained what it's about and we've done some suggested content on it. Here we've put what the awareness days are about. We've even put the um the link to the foundation or to the website if we found it. And then we've put the hashtag for World Digestive Day. So literally, you if you want to do some content around, so say, I don't know, you have your own drink that you created, or it might be in your, I don't know, in your restaurant, you sell ginger, and that's really good for digestion. Um, and actually, you know, or you use ginger in a lot of your things, or it might be something to do with um your beauty products and how that supports something else you know like anything like that basically you can do and so if you wanted to use that you literally can create use that content create a post and use the hashtag um and the website just takes you directly to the information about it as well if you want to add any more the same with do 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 World No Tobacco Day. I mean, that's quite an interesting one. Um, but again, there's the hashtag there. So anybody that's involved in that will be following that hashtag and using that hashtag. But think about what other hashtags would they be using? So if it was World No Tobacco Day, then it might be vaping. It might be anti-vaping. It might be anti-tobacco, stop smoking. Um, I don't know, stop smoking campaign. There'll be all those hashtags around that. Um, healthy healthy lungs might be something to do with asthma it might be something to do with cancer there'll be lots of things around those hashtags so you wouldn't just use that hashtag you would use anything around those days and so anything around the topic and anything around the symptoms anything around the problem anything around the solution so just make sure when you're using these hashtags and you're using these campaigns make sure you don't just think about the hashtag that we've put you think about the other ones that are around it as well all right i've got a question I mean, yes, okay, fair enough. Um, I've had an interesting one from someone saying, do you realise how many times you've said, I don't know, we're here because we're hoping you do know, but I do know, so thank you very much. Um, yes, I think we all have our own little um, things that we say every now and again in between phrases and words, but um, yeah, I'll take that as feedback. Thanks very much. So um, here we've got all the tools and support that you need. So every week um, I come in here and I talk to you guys on a Wednesday, but on a Monday we have the team from um, the rest of Maybe who come in and talk about how to use Maybe. So it could be quite literally anything from how to use the, I don't know, the content calendar, something like that. Um, Tuesday you've got social media basics so if you don't know how to do a reel or you're struggling again with hashtags you want to go in deeper you can go in and basically it's a bit like this it, you can be interactive or you can just listen we've got me on a Wednesday you've got um, Thursday ads for beginners um, you've got Friday advanced ads and then you've got um, always on um, demand training as well so that is all of the videos that we put on here um, and we do so much training honestly it's unbelievable so if you've not gone in there and checked it out it is me and it's a bunch of other um, experts in the background um, that have created content for you guys so please go in and use it um, and as usual we've got um, all the social media tools that you need so when you go into your dashboard you can schedule you can advertise advertise and um, you can build up an audience in here and you can do some reporting and you can learn from any competitor. So the key takeaways for me um, are to use a mix of hashtags particularly on Instagram and ensure that you think about the place the people and the products. So think about how you um, how you interact with your place, think about how you interact with people and the product. So thinking about, I guess, what the problem is and how you're solving it and think about whether you need to drive people to a place or whether you need to interact with people in that place. Um, small businesses get a lot of support on social media, but remember you want to make a big noise in a busy place 
aka social media is a is noisy. So you need to think about the content that matches the hashtags. So it's thinking about making sure that if you're doing, you know, if you're really focused on the hashtags, you actually have to the content that backs up that hashtag. Um, location based hashtags um work, but um back it up with engagement in your place. So if you are actually using things like Shrewsbury, there was all the Shrewsbury ones, I would make sure as a Shrewsbury business that I'm going in there and actually interacting with them. I'm liking other businesses' posts um, as well. Um, Product-based hashtags um, are great, but make sure that you use the tagging function as well. So that's going back to um, one of the brands that we looked at today. So they, the Woodland Trust, so they actually tagged in, you know, the BBC, they tagged in. So if you, it might be other businesses that you've used, it might be suppliers, but make sure you use the tagging because again, that's much more likely to get you not only seen, but make sure that you're actually shared. Um, service and profession based hashtags ensure that you're not um drowned out within your sector so again there would be you know there there's going to be a hundred other businesses selling social media there's going to be a hundred other businesses that are selling um i guess what you guys do and then it's just making sure that you are using um some of the other hashtags around it so that you are more fine-tuning that so it might be that you know social media is the big thing the mums is a smaller thing but if i'm a social media expert who's a mum i'm more likely to find you that way and then just make sure that you set up your maybe account and get started with social media, because this is why we do this, guys. Every week, you know, we sit here and we come up with content um, that we hope obviously will support you guys and what you do. So if there's ever anything that you, um, I guess, need from us um, or there's any um, extras that you want um, added into these webinars, please just feed that back and let us know.